up everybody welcome back to football guys youtube channel here we are back with another dynasty edition and you know i've been doing little buys and sells and kind of diving into players and, and where'd you go but my, my true passion is you know dynasty theory and you know strategy because i think sometimes we, we we skip that it's easy to get clicks for you know buys and sells videos and all that stuff but then i think dynasty strategy plays you know an important part of like where how do you how do you play the format because the format can be difficult a lot more difficult than people think and what we're gonna be looking at today is kind of like how to rebuild but not necessarily rebuild i don't like saying rebuild i like saying retool um like try to try to go win your leagues right and not be in that perpetual rebuild so i'm gonna go through strategies i'm also gonna be diving into strategies for people that you know if you're new to the format, if you take over an orphan, like how should you kind of a, approach this? Because I think too, we get too heavy in the theory. I think we try to out, you know, galaxy brain the theories and the strategies too much. Like it, it, it's sometimes it's too much. And I think you can keep it very simple. So my goal here, as always, is to kind of hope you get one or two things from this that can maybe help you as a dynasty manager. And if you're trying to rebuild a retool, how to kind of go by that and just help, you know, rebuild your roster. So let's dive into it, right? Let's get into it and let's talk about what you're going to do. So first thing you're going to do is you got to evaluate your team strength. So the biggest thing for me, man, understanding like where is my roster where is my team right now and the it, it is hard like a lot of guys will say hey get some spreadsheets understand where the values at hey look at adp and all that stuff but i always like free so my big thing is like i'm gonna look for something that free that i can use that will help me at least just analyze a little bit and that is this resource that i've actually come across recently he's a very good person that runs it. it's called dynastydaddy.com and it is a it's just a you know a team power ranking source and you see it right here i, I gave you one of my leagues that i'm in I, I showed you one of my rosters here and all you do is you put in your system you can go to the, the resource and you put in whatever format you play in and it'll pull up all your leagues and it gives you just a snapshot of what your roster looks like right so here's one of mine you'll see that i'm a contender right now that i'm an overall rank in there is is two and you look at my starter rank and that is where you see that i have elite starters at the position now i love it that number one is a fraud in this league and because of his starter rank is eight so that shows me that he has a lot of depth possibly at the wide receiver position but and maybe the draft capital but overall his roster is not as good as mine. Mine has a very, very solid starter strength. And then if you look at like the contenders, you know, when you're looking at starters, so it really does a good job of showing that power rankings. Now, what can you do with this, right? So for me now, I look here, my quarterback rank, which is weird. I do have Josh Allen and Deshaun Watson. Um, but when you look at the quarterback rank here, um, a lot of that is because I have no depth. And then Watson was a little bit of a struggle last year. So, you know, you can go here and find, okay, this person, you know, you know, for even the first squad here, you know, they're very good at wide receiver. They're deep there, but they need some other help. Maybe they're willing to get rid of one of their wide receivers for a position that I have. Maybe my running back position, I can maybe go buy a running back or wide receiver off that team. These, this is ways to kind of, you know, understand what's there. Now, I will say this, just knowing what your team is, is good. But the most important thing you got to do, you got to know your league mates. So there's a guy um, that I follow on social media, on Twitter. His name is Leo. He used to write for DLF. Now he, he he's kind of, he's kind of retired somewhat. Uh, he called himself FF Houdini back in the day. He is very good at understanding like he, he, and you should follow him. It's at SIGA underscore FF, C-I-G-A. And he's really good at understanding like league mates tendencies and he dives into kind of that theory and it's really it's it's great understanding like what your league mates do what kind of trades do they make are they bargain hunters are they you know veteran afraid are they this understanding what your league mates do you have to understand what these guys you know what they are looking for when it comes to dynasty and assets and then you can kind of manipulate a little bit right and and there's ways to do that so go look at this resource but also understanding your league mates tendencies and and, and i know this like I have a league that uh, I know that there's two guys in there, uh, hardcore Packer fans. Even though it's Dynasty, they love Packers. I could get more value for Jordan Love from those two guys than I can from anybody else. And I think that matters. And I think that we forget that in our, because every league, you got to understand this, is a, is a small micro league of Dynasty. You know, one bad trade will set the market for, for uh, your market for the rest of the year. You know, that stuff lingers. Like if someone, you know, undersells a quarterback in a 10-man league, you're in trouble now because if your quarterback is where your strengths at, but that market was set that way. This is why I advocate if you got to rebuild a retool, you be the first person to set the market at the market value you want. Because if someone jumps ahead and starts rebuilding before you and they make bad trades, 
that's going to set the market and that's going to hurt you in your rebuild or retool. So set that market, know your, know your team strength here, use this resource. It's free. But at the same time, when you're thinking of like, you know, understand your league mates is just as important when you're talking about rebuilding. Now, the one area I want to get into is retool versus rebuild, right? We always see dynasty managers, you know, that productive struggle, that rebuild. Hey, but then they rebuild for five years. That's no longer called a rebuild, right? That's not a rebuild. That's that's just poor management. Essentially, you're the Houston Texans, right? That's just not that's not what you want to kind of do. So wh- how do I retool, right? So here are some ways to do this. And when I would say about retool, like that last team you saw. I was able to have Bijan on that roster, and now I'm a contender, right? I did a productive struggle the first year, built through my wide receivers, have two strong quarterbacks, and now I'm boom, I got Bijan Robinson. And that is kind of how you have to kind of, you can retool. Now, other ways to do this, look at our ranking system. So we're, we're unveiling a pretty good ranking system coming up. So understanding kind of where does my... <clears throat> roster look at like where where is it at understanding like okay how many guys do i have in my adp now here's a way to look at this if you have you know let's say you're looking at your roster if you have four guys in the top 25 of adp you have a contending roster So know that, like, just because you think you might want to rebuild, if you have those four or five guys that are elite that can score you fantasy points, you can easily add veterans because of the way that veterans are valued out there to your roster. And you can do that, right? Four or five guys. Hey, I have, I have that, that, you know, those rankings, I have that ADP at the position. I think I can go contend. Don't just rebuild because, you know, you have those top guys. I see guys all the time. They have Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase on the roster. They want to rebuild. And then they sell Jamar Chase for five pieces that are nickels. And Jamar Chase is a dollar. And it's like, oh, I got a bunch of assets. No, dude, you got fleeced, right? You needed Jamar Chase. You could build around these other guys. You can do other moves to make those guys you know, more relevant. Now, if it's a running back, I understand. But wide receivers, no, you build through those, right? The other way is consolidate depth. Instead of trading Jamar Chase for five nickels, trade five nickels for a quarter try to go add like those depth pieces that people love there's always those dynasty things that people that think are going to break out right the tight ends are especially if you can maybe get one of those sleeping tight ends that everybody talks about that don't matter right the 12 to 24 guy the rankings but someone believes in them and you can pair it with a second or even another asset like a low end running back two low and one wide receiver two and pair up and go tear up and get into those like, you know, low end running back wide receiver ones, or maybe the high end wide receiver twos or running back twos. That's the way to do it. Consolidate that depth. Don't add depth to a rebuilding roster. Then you're not going to have any elite assets. And then that's where you get into trouble and then understand your premium position. So for example, you, you know, you're in a tight end premium league and you have Mark Andrews. You're not rebuilding. You're retooling, right? Like you have an elite player at that roster. You're in a super flex league and you have two of the top 12 quarterbacks. You're not rebuilding. You're retooling. Go add pieces around them and build around them. And you don't necessarily have to blow it up. Blowing it up doesn't always work, right? Now, way to look at this too. This is a really good, you know, cycle of pick and player value of what you're looking for. This chart is by EK Baller. It's really good. Um, and and, I, and it's and again, it's not perfect in terms of any like any theory is not perfect, but it does show you kind of when the value is right. So you go around the board, you'll see like buy picks with the with the one and two. You're looking at buying picks, neutrals at where we're at right now. Selling picks is you know around that four or five. So when are you going to go out there and buy picks? When are you going to go out there and like, when's the most value, right? So when do you have that most value? Now we're sitting here in May and June, you still get into like, you could sell some picks for players. Um, but also like the, there's in June and July and August, what I have found, especially June and July, people get bored and you know what they like to do. They just like to trade. There's ways to kind of get those trade addicts to kind of understand like, Hey, I can kind of manipulate value right now and get some assets that maybe they don't want to move because they're bored. And you can go add guys to this and these low end running back twos, wide receiver twos, some of these guys out there that you can kind of move off of. And I always find the guys that always want to rebuild. And I just buy their players. And while they're continuing to rebuild for two or three years, I'm competing for playoffs and championships. That's the way to do it. Right now, understanding age cliffs is important too. So if you're new to the format, right? Like understanding kind of like, okay, when do I get off players and when do I not? The biggest thing is, you know, Marvin Ellican, he, he writes for the fantasy footballers and Yahoo Sports. I love Marvin. Marvin's a great guy. He's a really good analyst. He did the cycles of like each position. You can go check out his, his articles. They're still on fantasyfootballers.com. But I'm going to give it a rundown real quick, but I do want to give him credit for this. You know, when he's, he looked at historical top 12 and uh, finishes by age for quarterbacks, 
the 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 peak year for quarterbacks in fantasy is 29 years old. That's the peak. After 29, you see a big dip. Okay. Now, some of these guys are going to be elite as we go through here, right? So there's always kind of a raise, like there's maybe that outlier with Brady or whatever the case may be. But at 29 is the peak. So that's maybe the age cliff for quarterbacks. Now we saw that with like Russell Wilson falling off late, you know, mid thirties, you know, Kirk cousins is around there. So understanding when those age cliffs are for quarterbacks, which doesn't necessarily matter as much because I think they are lasting a little bit longer, but kind of understanding like where that elite value is and like running backs, you know, with what is their age cliff, maybe a little earlier because, you know, when you're looking at just a production standpoint, will they be able to further that injury, those type of things. Then you're looking at like running backs, Running back one seasons by age, really the, the eclipse is 25. Everybody kind of knows that though, right? The 25 to 26 a range. That's when you're looking at running back one, you know, seasons by age, 25 is the cliff. Okay. Now people know that though. So it's really the easiest time to go buy running backs right now. And to go out and collect assets is when they're at that 25, 26, 27 in mark. So if you want to retool, not rebuild, there is a good market to go grab running backs around this time when they are a little older, because they're depreciating assets like cook and Kamara and Chubb and all these guys that could be a way to retool, not just rebuild. Now, Running back two seasons by age, you will see some. 27 is actually the elite peak for running back two. So if you have some running backs in that 25 to set 27 range, they can put up running back two numbers. And you might just need running back two numbers if you build to the wide receiver position and you have two elite quarterbacks, you'd be happy with that. <clears throat> as far as wide receivers go, wide receiver one seasons by age, really it's 26 is the elite peak. And then 27, 28 is where you see the drop off. That's pretty historical. You know, when you're looking at what the wide receiver one seasons are, that's very, very common when you see this. Um, and, and we see that decline. As far as wide receiver two numbers, 26 is pretty much it. So you're looking at that 26, 26 27 range, you know, when you're looking at wide receivers and now 28, they can still have elite production. Um, but you just understand that where that age cliff is for their, for the wide receiver position. And then lastly, the tight end position. I mean, it's hard because Kelsey is just Kelsey. So you're going to see that rise up. Um, but you know, when you're looking at like the historical top 12 tight end seasons by age, it's like 25, 26 in that, in that category. Um, and so just know that, but again, like you have Tony Gonzalez, Rob, and then, you know, Gronkowski, Kelsey, they've kind of elevated those numbers. So just to understand the age cliffs, go look at his article. He writes way more in depth than what I just gave you, but those are just ideas of where you will be looking at for those age cliffs. And then finally, just to get through some advice that we kind of wrap this up, you know, picks to acquire right now, the cheapest picks of 2025 class, right? Uh, 2024 is always going to be more expensive. Uh, so there are ways to kind of buy the 2025 class. So kind of go buy those, get some seconds, get some in there. And the thing about picks when you're rebuilding, you know, when you're looking at like, okay, when can I rebuild and um, how does that like, you know, affect me or where does that come from? You know, understand the picks don't really depreciate in value. They're always going to be there. There's always people going to buy into it. So if you have kind of a depreciating asset and you can get a second, maybe an early second for them. So like Joe Mixon to me is a good buy right now, but if you're really are retooling and rebuilding, you can get a 201 for him, even though it's a second round pick, you might want to correct that asset because maybe you know, you can kind of flip him for something else, right? Or you get a Kendra Miller, or one of these guys that kind of pops off, then you have that value back. When to add running backs, know that, you know, if I'm contending, I don't mind my running back two being my weakest asset on my, on my super flex teams. And I, I will just raw ride them out. And then I'll buy them in the middle of the year. When I know my team's a contender, I don't mind giving up a first week eight, right? Like I know, okay, you know, late first in this, I'll go, I'll give it up and just, and go try to win it. Adding them there right now is, is fool's gold, okay? So there's some areas where you got to be very careful with this. Now that the draft's over, now the free agency over, it's pretty safe, but there's still guys out there, veterans out there that could sign, and that could hurt you, right? So I try to just add it the latest possible time I need to for running backs. And then finally, rookie draft advice. You know, understand kind of how the rookie values are, where the tier breaks are. Follow us here. We have the rookie draft guide. Uh, for football guys, go check that out. We've been we've been doing some 2024 content as well. Um, understanding that, understanding like take best player available. So take the best player available, and especially in rookie drafts, because you can always flip these guys, right? Don't feel for need in your rookie drafts. Take the best player available, then you can trade them, look for assets, re you know, retool. Um, you could also, you know, you know, if you're sitting at the 110, 
and, or someone's sitting at the 110, you have Rashad Bateman and you flip it for that and you can kind of reset, right? You're like, okay, I'm going to take another wide receiver like Zay or any of these other guys. There's a way to do that in your rookie draft. So that's kind of just some general knowledge and help you there. So appreciate you guys. I know it's a different type of video, but I hope it helps. I hope the strategy videos help kind of give you an idea. You can always, you know, ask me on Twitter, just DM me at the boys underscore 22. If you need any help, any trade advice, anything like that, please. I'm here to help you guys. Uh, if you're not on Twitter, just drop in the comments below. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already, but hit that like button for sure before you get out of here. Uh, I will catch you guys next time.